our, and we always put our bait bag on, and we always have it over here on our left side, and we always have our clicker here, and we have this hat that we wear when we're training, and the dog says, I'm ready to train, and I'll do whatever you want me to do as long as I see the clicker and the bait bag, the hat, and we're in the kitchen, okay? And as soon as any one of those things comes out of the picture, what happens? Bye-bye response. So I'd like you to be aware of changing things all the time. Okay? That right off the bat, whatever you're working on, work on it in the kitchen, the bathroom, the living room, the basement, the garage. Um, for those of you that did puppy kindergarten, you're going to regret signing up for this class in January because I'm going to tell you to get outside and practice your stuff outside. That's very, very important. Um, because this way, the dog is not learning. I only sh it only pays to listen if check, check, check is in place. So your bait bag. I will recommend that you only have your bait bag on your body when you're in this classroom or, for example, you're going to go outside and work on loose leash walking and you really need, you know, a whole bunch of treats right there. Otherwise, as much as you can, take it and leave it on a table, not a table they can get to, nearby. Or, if you have any hooks in the house, hang it up here on the wall. And when the dog does something over here, okay, we're going to mark that behavior, but we're going to run over and grab a treat out of there. Part of your homework is to prepare your training environment, which means take all kinds of things that are important to your dog, okay, and stash them all over the house. You should have a ball between the cushions of your couch. You should have a rope toy in your bathroom vanity. You should have a little container of treats. And for this, you use stuff like pepperoni that has so many preservatives in it that it never goes bad, and you stuff that in your sock drawer. And you have this. Um, in your mailbox. So you're practicing whatever you want your dog to learn, but reinforcement is always handy. So many people say to me, well, I just can't have treats on me all the time. Yeah, you can, but you also don't have to, okay? But what I want is I want for you to know that whatever room of your house you're in, you are no more than, you know, an arm's reach and a step away from something that your dog would consider a payment. Okay, does that make sense? So that's going to be part of your homework. And by the way, when you leave, um, a student of mine gets these for free. Um, there's, if there's none up there, I would get more. Actually, they're in the middle there. If you want some of these containers to store some treats in, grab a few of these on your way out. They're on the middle wall up there. All right, so we want to vary our reinforcement. A lot of times people come into class and they have a big giant bait bag filled with chicken. And by the way, I'm not a big fan of chicken because chicken shreds and it grinds into the floor. So I love pork chops, steak, oops, don't do that. Pork chops, steaks, liver, uh, steak, liver, um, natural balance dog food, which comes in a roll and you can slice into whatever size pieces you want. You can buy these rolls really tiny or really huge, okay? There's a million different things that you can use, but when you look into your bait bag, okay, there should be a mixture of food. I want you to notice two things. By the way, there's some chicken on the bottom of here. I'll make this look a little more mixed, okay? Two things about this. The size of the treats, these are cut for a 75-pound dog, and that this bait bag is half as full as it should be. Now, you won't go through that much food in a class, except maybe week five, where we do go to mat, okay? But the problem is if your bait bag gets down real low, you start reaching in for treats, and you're getting crumbs, okay? It gets harder to get them out, and it messes up your timing. Because if we have a dog that sits, and we want that sit to be stronger, and we want to pay the dog, but by the time we reach into our bait bag, the dog stood up, took two steps, sneezed, and then peed on a rock. What did he get the treat for? Right, that last thing. So we want to keep those bait bags nice and high, and we want to be able to get that treat there within two seconds, because what's the big picture here? If we get that treat in in time, if we get that payment in in time, we are making the behavior stronger. And here's what training really is. We take the behaviors we like. Sit, down, stay, come, leave it, go to mat. Those are all the things we're going to work on. And we make those behaviors so strong that they crowd out the garbage behaviors you don't like, okay? Like jumping, nipping, barking, things like that. Questions so far? It will take breath every once in a while. So I understand you don't carry that bait bag around all the time? You, like if 
I'm outside, because my problem with him is we play outside because now we have an invisible fence. Mm -hmm. Now we want to go in. <laughs> Never, ever, ever does he come in. Right. The only way I can get him in mm -hmm. is with a tree. And so I always make sure and on my pocket that I'm driving and luring, and there's danger to that. He should be, and if you did puppy class, week three, this was on your homework sheet, or it was also on your head start sheet, I think. Um, until you have what I call a working recall, which means you can stand here and say, come, and they will come. Never off leash outside in a fenced yard, an invisibly fenced yard, or obviously an unfenced yard, because that puts you in a situation of going, come, and the dog going, I don't, I've not discovered that that has a reinforcement history worth paying attention to. So we go, come, the dog goes, don't care. And we go, okay, here's a treat. The dog goes, okay. And then pretty soon you're gonna be out there with a pot roast because the bribe has to get bigger and bigger and bigger to get the dog what you want, to do what you want, because think like a dog. Why, does, why would he want to come back in the house more than he would want to stay outside? What's inside that he wants? Xbox? No, <laughs> nothing. Right. So it takes a lot of reinforcement history to teach a dog, no, 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 trust me, this will pay. But we're bribing, and bribing is dangerous. We'll talk a little bit about that. So, leash on. When, even when you're playing, when time is done, pick up the leash, lead him back in the house. Just let him drag it around while you're playing. What happens is the leash is on, because mm -hmm. I'm out there with my two kids and we're all playing ball. It, it, he's getting very smart. He can sense one of us with our hands trying to go down to the ground. I'm serious. Longer leash. And, and grab the leash, and now he starts running. Yeah. And now it's a big game. Right, because he's learned the chase game. So, longer line, longer line. That's not, that and, makes sense. and knots in it about every five feet, so just pop your foot on it, takes off, too bad, can't get anywhere. And that's it, hold, hold the leash and pick it up and bring him in. And do, never pick up a light line for obvious reasons when the dog is running. Right. Okay, because they'll cut your hand even, even sometimes with gloves on. Okay, let's talk about our clicker. Um, how many of you have a clicker with you today? Okay, if you do not have a clicker, raise your hand. Just one? Okay. All right. Now, what I want to do, go ahead and take out your clicker. I just want to get a clicker in everybody's hands today. Okay. 